All right, guys, today we're gonna to show you how to install the Iconic Cycles Power Upgrade Kit for the stock Ego mini bike. So for those that have been following the Ego Mini Bike Modders Group on Facebook, I put out a poll asking if anyone wanted a plug and play power kit from Iconic Cycles. Most people voted, yes, we want that, particularly this guy, Tom Murphy. Hey. Yeah, it seemed like a very popular option for those who wanted to do something that was a lot easier than what I did on my Ego Mini Bike, which was a complete overhaul, like totally gutted the bike, new motor, new battery, new controller. And so that's a lot of work and a lot of, uh, modding for most people. So Ryan Goodyear at Iconic Cycles, he created a kit, a far driver kit that would be easy to mount on the Ego. And so a lot of people have been asking, how do you do it? We need a video. And so Tom was kind enough to bring his bike out to Ann Arbor and work on his bike because obviously my bike doesn't have any of this stuff on there anymore. So we'll kind of do our best to show you guys how this is done in the least amount of steps as possible. Remove the panels. I really only took off this full side on the left completely. And then on, uh, uh, I took the very front panels off to access where the cables go in and everything. So I tried to keep this minimal as possible just to show you like you really don't have to do a complete takeoff of it. And if there's any questions, I always go to like the Ego website and the, the Ego YouTube page. They have uh, how to take off most of the panels. So this is the Far Driver 72280. Uh, comes with the Bluetooth dongle. This will allow us to change and tune the settings once we have it installed. So this is a Far Driver control controller that I've not actually seen before. It has a clear cover so you could see the circuit board and stuff like that. In terms of measurements, I think this looks like it'll just bolt right on using the existing hardware. So that's a plus. Um, obviously we have to remove the phase wires and then the power wires. And then uh, yeah, we have the harness for the far driver. Also part of the kit is the ignition switch with the voltage display. Then we have the three speed switch as well as the full twist throttle with the domino grips. So Tom also so opted for the Chao G display, which is what I have. Now you don't actually need a display to run this kit, but it's helpful because the stock display for the Ego is not compatible with this kit. On the website as an option, you could get the handlebar mount at the 7 8 uh, sizing, and it even had an option for like the razor mount. So if you were trying to put it on a razor mod, you could do that and it would just mount to the handles there. Just found this on Amazon. It's uh, adjustable to size. and and then it also helps a little bit with stability as well. That's awesome. So I'll put a link in the description for this thing that Tom got. I think this is really useful. So we'll get to it. We'll remove all the stock stuff. Uh, we'll start with this controller. All right, so one thing to note is that when you remove the power wires and the phase wires, you wanna use a socket wrench. Because the bolts are super tight, you might strip the top. So definitely use a socket wrench if you have eight millimeter. five millimeter Allen to remove the controller bolts from the frame. That looks good. And that should just pop right up. There you go. So size wise, it's pretty similar. It looks to be uh, pretty much the same. So we'll do a test fitting. We'll have the power terminals facing to the rear of the bike. Well, these we won't need anymore. So we're probably gonna have to route the uh, motor wires back here so that they reach this side of the controller and then this side will have the harness wires. And then once we make sure that everything works, we'll just do like a bench test. Then we'll start organizing the cables. I believe we can retain the stock switch over here, not the throttle, but the switch that'll control the lighting as well as some of the features that are on the harness. All right, so now that we have the far driver mounted on the bike, we're just doing a bench test. And here's how the connections are made. So you're gonna look at this blue connector coming out of the far driver. You have blue, white, black, yellow, white, and that goes into this three-speed switch, which is this guy right here. Three-speed switch is yellow, green, and brown. The next connector is this red one over here, which is pink and black, going into green and black, on the throttle ignition switch. There's another connector coming out 
that's red going into this orange connector from the far driver. You're gonna need both of these connections in order for the ignition switch to work. Next is the Bluetooth dongle. It's this guy over here, and it's connected to this connector, which has this red label right here. And you have four wires coming out of it. Finally, we have the throttle connector, which is black, blue, brown, into black, green, white, red, white, from the far driver, and that goes over here. To turn on the bike, make sure you have your batteries in, both batteries, turn on the Ego key, and it's hard to see here, but you'll see the batteries will turn on. And then the second step is turning on the ignition switch. Once you do that, you're gonna hear a beeping noise, okay? And you'll see our voltage right now is 57.5. So it's a little over 57 volts. Tom has the batteries fully charged, and so that is the readout. And you're gonna hear this beeping noise, and the beeping noise is a good thing. It means that things are working. We're gonna hit up Ryan Goodyear to actually get the tune, but just to test it out to make sure all the connections are working, we'll pull the throttle just a little bit. You can see that the motor's working, everything's working, light switch is working. Horn works. And before we get into the tuning, Tom is going to tidy up, uh, you know, put the throttle on, fix these wires, run everything back through the bike, zip tie everything. One debt to society later. Okay, the bike is all cleaned up. We got everything zip tied. Over here, we have some of the connectors, put some painter's tape on top of it. When Tom gets home, he's probably gonna add a neoprene sleeve, make this a little bit neater, but everything's bolted down. All the wires are connected. We'll just leave the panels off for now when we do our first ride. We actually didn't install the Chow G display today because that's not a plug and play option at the moment. You actually have to wire it in to the far driver controller. We don't actually need the display today, but Tom will do that on his own time. If you want to get that specific display, just know that it might require some wiring. Ryan is working on a way to incorporate the stock Ego display into this controller. So if that works, um, maybe it'll be more of a plug and play system. So to tune the bike, the first thing you're gonna do is go to Open Pro and you'll see these settings, parameters. All right, so I'm just gonna scroll down all the settings. You just wanna copy and paste all the parameters over here. Ratios and speed, that's an important one as well. You'll see 100% on most of these settings. LD212, LQ373. Ratios and gear, you're gonna to wanna to change that as well. And then I think that is about it up until protect or the battery. So you're gonna change these voltage settings too. Our three speed switch is actually in reverse. So one is actually the highest setting, two is the middle setting, and three is eco mode. And then Tom, if you wanna hit the throttle, You'll see that the uh, motor is spinning and it's hitting about uh, 1930, 1930 RPMs. So that should give us way more power than the stock controller. So yeah, we'll take this out for a ride and hopefully it does what we want it to do. So let's do it. All right, I'm gonna be starting on the, uh, the lowest setting then just to get a feel, figure out what the difference is. Oh man, here we go. First moped trip in Ann Arbor. Following Rick. Here we go. Yeah, I can already feel there's more torque on the lowest setting. It probably feels like it's halfway between the first lowest and the middle. Oh yeah, this is easily like 18 miles an hour. All right, we're gonna rip it into the middle gear. Oh yeah, you can feel that already. The wind kicked up right on that uphill. This is so much better than stock. This is where we're opening up, gotta bring it to first. Okay, whoa, that is way quicker. Holy cow. 
That is so much faster than the first one now. I've kicked it up to the first one now. Okay. Yeah, the highest. It's definitely got a lot more kick. I was sit thinking the second one, I was probably easily hitting like 22, 25. Yeah, I definitely, I need. I felt the need to go into second gear going up the hill. Oh, this is great. I can't wait to go ride this around to work. I'm gonna go to Stony Creek Metro Park later. This is my first time riding with another bow cutter. So I'm still trying to figure out uh, etiquette. I'm just gonna kind of follow slightly behind him to the right. That seems like the play. Here we go. So Rick said he got up to 40 a minute ago. I'm full throttle. I'm catching up. Speed on it's 30, so. I can't wait to have a speedometer hooked up on my phone in the front of me. Coming for a break. Definitely gotta upgrade those brakes next. That's the only real upgrade coming next. Brakes. I would like to be able to stop safe. Oof. Wasn't looking that hard at the manhole. It's hard to tell without an actual speedometer. And then like every time I feel like I'm getting up to max speed, these the car is slowing down, you know? So then I'm like, dang, I wonder if I could have gone a little farther. But this is great. Like I know I'm easily hitting 30. Like, okay. yeah. I know I'm going faster than 28. That's one thing I know. And we've only used, with our test runs and stuff, we've only used one tick of battery. Yeah, about 20% of battery. That's with us just revving it and having fun before we even took it anywhere. Oh, this is awesome. You ever been at a stop when it was at stock for too long? It would go back into the ready mode. You'd have to hit ready again. That was the worst. I hated that. 34, 35, 36. I think 36 might be the max there. Right off the rip, you can feel how much more power the, the motor's actually putting into its output like that, that untapped potential. I love it. It's what it should have been from the beginning. It's so much quicker on the start. The torque is absolutely where I want it. It's what it should have been the whole time is I think what everybody's gonna say. It was very easy to install as well, honestly. Even if I didn't have Rick's help, it would probably would have just taken me an extra hour. It looked like I topped out at 37 miles an hour. Unsure if that really is the most topped out it could have been. That was the base tune for this far driver controller and Tom is gonna talk to Ryan Goodyear and maybe fine-tune it to see if he could pull out maybe a little bit more speed. Yeah I'm gonna keep him updated, uh, take screenshots of the graphs and stuff and just keep the the speedometer kind of in check when I'm going. Again this is sort of a work in progress. Some people have been installing this kit very similar to how we did it. People are wiring things just a little bit differently having their own custom some switches and things like that. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but the best part about this process is that you're just swapping out the controller. The Chaoji display, that will require some custom wiring. That's something that Tom will work on in his own time. If you have any questions about that, hit up Tom or hit up Ryan. It's pretty much just three wires, at least that's how I have it on my bike. It's just three wires that come from the far driver controller to connect the display. So it's truly just unscrew the other one, screw the other thing in. The only thing we had to move was the motor um, input was on this side. Originally, we had to move it over to the other side to accommodate. Keep your lighting, uh, you keep your horn. Yep. Um, some modes don't work, like reverse doesn't work anymore. Um, and then obviously your eco, normal, and sport don't work anymore. If you want it to change out, you can. Mm -hmm. 
pretty much like how I have it. I have custom switches on mine. That's where you could just get creative, you know, things that aren't just like plug and play. But when you get to this point, you start to learn that you get, you gain confidence and then you're like, well, I can wire lights. I can wire a switch. Yeah. It's easy enough. Yeah. And if you have any questions, join the Facebook modders group. Well, hopefully this video will be helpful for anyone who's on the fence about getting this iconic power upgrade kit for the Ego. But uh, now that I've seen it in person and actually walked through it with Tom, it's, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's a great value for what it is, to be honest. And if you, you know, decide to maybe upgrade the uh, battery or the motor, the controller will still be compatible. So you don't have to actually do the whole thing that I did, a fully gutted transplant or anything. You could do it in pieces. Maybe when you save some money, you could sort of like figure out if you want to go further. But for most people, I think this is just enough. And this is how the bike should have came, stock. The only way I could see myself upgrading this any farther is if somehow I decided to start racing it and I wanted a sleeper or something. And then I would go upgrade it to be like Rick's. <laughs> but otherwise, I think this is perfect and I can't see doing any more besides cosmetics. Thank you.